Hello, hello, hello. Happy Thanksgiving from the 214 Sports Show. I am TJ Krulowitz. We got Courtney Machani and we got Joe Duffy right here on this Thanksgiving Dallas special. I also got my dog here who's a little excited about it, uh, Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Oh, oh yes, beautiful. sir. Doggo, doggo. Yes, dog, sir, dog, Lucy. Dog's a little camera shy, but she's excited. Um, yeah. Scrammed but, as soon as he pointed to her. <laughs> she got out of there. It was a race so, for uh, lights. We're, uh, you know, we're, we're, we got another episode for Thanksgiving. We got a very important game today for the Cowboys Commanders game. Um, Cowboys looking to go eight and three. Um, you know, as every, every third, every, uh, Thanksgiving for Dallas sports fans, it's, a uh, it's always just a little terrifying. Great tradition. Great tradition, though. Always look forward to it. Beautiful especially, tradition. Especially when you can play an NFC East rival. Uh, especially when that rival is someone that you know you can take care of business against. Mm-hmm. And almost every time, except, you know, maybe in late in the season. But we'll let that one slide. But uh, Washington, I can't wait sure. to see what happens. Who knows? Yeah, it's always good to have that, uh, you know, to always be at home for Thanksgiving, at least. Because historically, that's where the Cowboys have done better, so especially in recent years, so pretty good. 12-game 12, 12 12. home winning streak? Yeah. 12-game home winning streak. It's crazy. So let's get into more recent Cowboys history. One of my favorite years in recent history, not my favorite ending. But <laughs> uh, on today's date, November 23rd, 2014, uh, the Cowboys defeated the New York Giants in MetLife Stadium to move up to 8-3 and three on the year. The Cowboys were once down 21 to 10, but ended up winning 31 to 28. Bless you, behind a Des Bryant touchdown with one minute left to go in the game. Romo went for 275 yards and four touchdowns and only one fumble. DeMarco Murray rushed for 121 yards, and Des Beasley and Witten all had touchdowns in this game. Barry Church also got an interception on the defense. The Giants moved to three and eight. Cowboys went to eight and three. Of course, we all know how that season ended. Um, we don't need to talk about it. We all know that we all know the outcome. So, yeah. but fun game, fun game, very fun game. You know, very fun season that was a wild ride. Honestly, probably the best Cowboys team that we've ever, uh, that we may have ever seen in our yeah. lifetime so far. Who knows? The jury's still out on this team, but uh, yeah, you know, that was a great team to watch back in 2014 elementary school. Really thought we had a chance, but you know, some some people had to get in the way. Yeah, some people. Yeah, some people. <laughs> Go ahead and put a name on it. Who's that? Who's that? Some people. <laughs> yeah, some uh, striped striped fellows. Striped fellows. Oh, okay. The zebras. So, for the trivia of the day, you know, a lot of people say that 2014 though was the was most definitely the 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 best year that the Cowboys have had to win a Super Bowl since their last actual Super Bowl. So my question is. There's two seasons um, where the Cowboys had their best record since winning a Super Bowl in 1995 or 1996, mm. technically. Can you tell me those two <laughs> years that they went for their best record of, and I'll say it to make it a little easier because, you know, years are hard to remember. Oh, I, I got this and three. Oh, I, I know this, three. man. I know, I, 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 know, I, I, know I know this. I know this. this. That's the best record they've had since – their championship season in 1995. Yeah, they they've had it twice. twice since. Yeah, he's saying twice. twice. I know. Okay. This. So there's two years that that happened. If I, I, get, the other, if I get the other one off, it's definitely going to be because like it's like one year off. Like, so I'm mixing it up. I think I got this one, though. Doesn't yeah. seem too bad. It's, it's, a, it's a little tame trivia question, but, you know, it's, it's, still, <clears throat> it's still a little tough. Mm-hmm. But anyways, you know, let's let's get into the Cowboys since they're the one that's, you know, furthest into their season in Dallas sports at this point. Um, move in to eight and three or seven and three. Sorry, I was going too much in the on today's day. The Cowboys should be going to eight and three today. Um, Surely they move in. They beat the Panthers, just absolutely obliterate them. Um something that we kind of expected. I don't know if we expected a big blowout in the end because, you know, it was an away game. Um, and Cowboys just don't seem to do that good on away games. But 
I don't, I don't know. I mean, it seems like there is a lot of uh, my dad's calling me during the podcast. Um, <laughs> but there's there's a lot of you know there, there's a lot of you know we don't have to use Dak that much this game, but you know I wanted to look a, look at the stats of Dak. Sorry, I'm stuttering a little bit here. But of course we have Dak, uh, 104 QBR rating on the season. One of his best ever. His best was in 2016. His rookie year, 104.9. He's also throwing for 19 touchdowns and only six interceptions. One of his best ratios. Uh, his rookie ratio is not going to get beat though. Um, and you know he's he's had 404 yards against the Giants, 374 against the Eagles, 304 against the Rams. He's been doing really good, picking up the yards as of recently. Um, his also completion rates at 70% this year. I just want to ask real quick, what do y'all think? Where do y'all think Dak ranks out of all of the quarterbacks in the league? You know, I personally would put him possibly he's top five. I'm willing to put him at five. Let's go. I'm willing to put him at five. Let's go. Real time. Explain I don't want to stretch and say he's top three. I look <laughs> at these numbers, man. He is having definitely his best year so far that we've seen. Uh, knock on wood, he's not going through any injury as of late. Uh, there's nothing to hold him back. There's no excuse we can see right now visibly. So if he plays bad, it's because he plays bad. We've had to deal with uh, the hand last year. The year before, we had to deal with the calf midseason. This year, he's playing healthy, clean ball. He said he doesn't want 10 picks this year after having a career high in picks. You can say it's an outlier year if you want to. But he's having a phenomenal year right now. Again, we're going back to uh, the completion percentage. Career high so far, 70.1. Uh, 2,600 yards passing so far. 19 pass touchdowns already in the season. Um, you talked about his QBR right now. Career high as of now. Well, highest since his rookie year, 73.9. Uh, not taking as many sacks as he has. Uh, in the past, but um, you look at, again, his passer rating, it's back to where it should be, like above 100, and so when we're looking at his plays so far, he's getting the ball off efficiently, he's not uh, letting pressure, like, you know, getting his way, and the line hasn't been perfect at times, but he's at least being more evasive right now, and using his legs more as accustomed to not being as mobile on the ground for the right. past two years with the injury, so we're seeing him uh not be afraid to run for first downs anymore, which you love to see after that injury a few years ago. But again, you're seeing a guy who's uh, zipping the ball fearlessly down the seam, whether it be to Luke Schoonmaker or Jake Ferguson. You're seeing more confidence in his throws to CeeDee Lamb. Um, I think his deep ball has actually gotten a little bit better. It's not perfect, but I don't expect him to be like amazing going downfield for a 50-yard pass. It's just not our offense that we're accustomed to. But he's been more accurate downfield for sure. Uh, when I look at Dak Prescott, he is definitely the reason why we are seven and three. I think that you know he's put us in the right position as a quarterback. There's no guy I'd honestly think that we should get instead of him. I know a lot of Cowboys fans are favorable for him, but um, I couldn't be more pleased with him so far. I think he's done a really good job, and you know a lot of people want to get on him and harp on him for mistakes such as the Philly game, but you know, stuff like that happens sometimes. He stepped out of bounds. He tried to throw to Jake Ferguson. He was a little bit short. I believe it was Luke Schoonmaker, actually. He tried to throw to him a little bit short of the goal line. It happens sometimes. All right? He's not a perfect quarterback. I don't expect him to be like prime Tom Brady. So I think he's fifth-ranked quarterback right now in the NFL. I expect him to be better than Brady, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I need more from him. Mind you, my voice cracks because I'm currently – Currently on the weather, but uh, top five. I mean, we talking about off of this season, like off of like what we this, we, this season. Damn, bro, I love Dak. I love Dak, but I can't. I say top ten. I can't put him in the top five category. Is right he now. better I mean, than Derek Carr at least? Oh, oh of course. I mean, I'll, I'll take Dak <laughs> Prescott over Derek Carr nine out of ten times in a week. If I get Derek Carr's twenty fifteen season, maybe. But other than that, I mean. Yeah, way better than Derek Carr. But, I mean, <laughs> when, you, when I look at the quarterback play right now, I mean, off the top of my head, you can't put him over Mahomes, obviously. Um, I, I like Lamar's play a little bit more this year than Dax. Uh, Herbert, I like Herbert's play a little bit more than Dax this year. Um, Hurts, even though Hurts, uh, his stats aren't, you know, the greatest. He is the front runner for MVP. Uh, that's about four quarterbacks. 
And I mean, like, so I, if anything, I could put Dak at that five so I can see that. But then you also have C.J. Stroud, who's kind of surprised everybody out to his play so far, even though he had that three interception game uh, last week. And I mean, mm-hmm. there's a couple of the quarterbacks as well that have been like showing out. So I could I could put Dak in the top ten, but top five, I'm not too sure about that. I mean, he still has those situations where towards the end of the games, we kind of see what we expect from Dak. Um, ooh. Man, flu boy. game for real, boy. Hey, that boy going through <laughs> It's uh, over. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I I still need to see more from Dak throughout the season. It's still going to be a long season for the Cowboys, especially because, you know, we're, we're, they're still fired for that top spot in the NFC East. So, there's definitely a lot I need to see more from Dak. Obviously, we still have that last Eagles matchup that we need to watch from him and a couple more key games on the stretch. But I, I like what he's been doing so far. I think – He's always had to solidify, is Dak top 10, is Dak not top 10? I think this year he solidified that he is top 10. But I think I, I still need to see a little bit more from down the stretch to put him in that top five category. I, I think, I, I think I'm going to have to agree with Joe here about being in the top five. I think he also uh, – I like that you're bringing up that he's definitely been uh, using his legs a lot more recently. I think also the the increased uh, productivity by, you know, C.D. Lamb, Jake Ferguson, and also even Brendan – Brendan Cooks from Dak Prescott has really, you know, has shown that I think Dak Prescott's ready to take the next step this year and then maybe even help give us a playoff run. But I'm saying top five also just because a lot of these quarterbacks that are usually top 10 in the league have not been top 10 in the league this year. You know, Tom Brady, first of all, retired. Joe Burrow hurt. Josh Allen sucks. Brock Purdy, you know, when he doesn't have weapons, he doesn't look too good either, to be honest. So, I mean, you're looking at people that are, you know, that, that are usually in that top 10, obviously not Purdy. Hey, um, they're obviously not in that top 10 or, or obviously in that top 10, but not in the top 10 this season. And I think you could put Dak in there at this point. And honestly, you know, you could say that Hertz is the better quarterback, but I said it last week. I think Hertz is not the better quarterback this year. I'm talking about this year. So I think I could put Dak even maybe not top three. I wouldn't say top three, but I could definitely say top five. I'm confident in that. Um, and then I also want to say I did have this uh, little conversation because you did mention C.J. Stroud. I did have this like conversation with my Houston buddies, and they asked me, they said, who would you rather have this season? If you're trying to win a Super Bowl this season, not future-wise, but just for this season, would you pick Dak or C.J.? I mean, I would choose Dak. Because just, just off of, like, the veteran leadership, you got to choose Dak. Because, I mean, you never know what you can get from CJ. It's a week-by-week thing. But, I mean, what, what do you think, Joe? Listen, I love CJ Stroud, man. Some of these Houston fans are getting really carried away. I love, <laughs> I love to watch him. I love to watch him play. But, like, again, like what Courtney said, it's a week-to-week game. We saw this guy just throw three picks against the Cardinals defense. Now, granted – Cowboys were not looking that amazing against the Cardinals either, so I guess we don't have much room to talk. Yeah. But C.J. Stroud, True. you know. And he still won the game. Get, give the guy a chance. Yeah, he won the game. Give the guy a chance to grow. He's a rookie. Don't put this unnecessary pressure on him saying that he's better than a guy who's been in the league this long and has been playing pretty much better than him right now. I don't want us to act like C.J. Stroud is, like, top three in the game. He's having a great year for a rookie for sure. He's pushing top 12, top 10, honestly, but. To say I'd rather have him than Dak, I, I just think it's kind of irresponsible. And I think it just shows they're getting a little bit carried away, my personal opinion. I'm trying to get a little too desperate after, you know, losing losing the ALCS, man. <laughs> yeah, they're, to, doing, they're, they're getting too desperate for another winning team. They're doing too much. They'll never be DFW, ever. We got we got too many <laughs> winning teams. We could lend them. We could lend them a winning team. They'll never. Ash was all they got. Oh, God. That's true. That was all they got. Yeah, but like, you well, know. Yeah, I would say Dak. I would say Dak for sure. I would definitely say Dak. Uh, let's move on real quick to the defensive side on the Cowboys, though, because we do have someone who just got released for some odd reason uh, from the Indianapolis Colts, Shaq Leonard, obviously the linebacker. Um, still got some good stats on him. Still being good, a good productive middle linebacker for the Colts. Um, a lot of Cowboys fans really want the Cowboys to pick him up. I mean, I think this is a simple yes, obviously, but I'm going to ask y'all. I mean, what do y'all think about Shaq Leonard? Do you think this guy really helps our team out? 
you know, with the absence of Leighton Van Der Esch, yeah. uh, he's out for the season now. And so we've had a hole, but we've had a revelation now with Marquise Bell, the undrafted free agent now. He's a big, lengthy backer who's been playing well for us so far, filling in for Leighton Van Der Esch. And so I was questioning if Shaq and Leonard honestly could fit our scheme. And I was thinking maybe he could, maybe he couldn't. I think he possibly could. I think why not take the risk for depth's sake? You know, why not have a guy who's a former All-Pro? He's been in the game for a while for now, and he can be on an actual winning team now instead of being in the Colts that have a new quarterback every single year. I mean, he's had he hasn't had a chance really to, like, you know, prove himself under the bright lights. And so after Andrew Luck retired, he had to go with, you know, Carson Wentz, oh, Phil Rivers, and then Carson Wentz, and then all these different backup QBs in Indianapolis. So I wouldn't mind giving it a Matt chance. Matt Ryan is another one. Matt Ryan. I wouldn't mind giving him a chance. I don't think we need him. But if you're asking, like, if, could we give him a chance, I can't say no. I mean, he's been there. He'd be good for depth's sake, for sure, on defense. Yeah, uh, my uh, my boy, he a big uh, – my cousin, he a big uh, Colts fan. So uh, he wasn't happy about the news of Darius Land Gang uh, – I mean, of Darius Shaq Land Gang uh, release. But, I mean – and talking with him, he uh he was telling me a lot. I mean, you know, about the Colts, they do know how to sign linebackers and how how to draft linebackers. I mean, Zaire Franklin's lead the league in tackles. They have a nice uh, young guy, EJ Speed. Uh, Bobby Okereke went to the Giants. We also see what he's doing with the Giants. He's also, I'm pretty sure, high in the league in tackles. So, if one thing about the Colts, they do know how to draft linebackers. With that being said, um, with Shaq getting released, it was kind of uh. Even though he's the highest paid linebacker, they kind of didn't know what to do with him anymore, um, especially with how much they, they say he couldn't make plays, so they'll take him out on third down. Even though he leads the Colts linebackers in turnovers combined, so he has more turnovers than both the Colts linebackers, and they still let him go. So, I mean, I think it still shows that he is still a turnover machine, and I mean, turnover monster, and that's what he has been ever since he got into the league in 2018. I still think he can make those plays. I mean... He's been hurt. Uh, he had a couple bad years, but he still is a four four time All Pro. And when he is on the field, three three time first team. So when he's on the field, he makes plays. So I think he has a lot left in the tank. I think there's a lot of situations where, especially the Colts. I mean, we saw what they did with Peyton Manning, where uh, they thought Peyton Manning had nothing left, and then he goes in and he does what he does in uh, Denver. So I think there's a lot of situations where these teams just give up too quick and I, I don't know why they really gave up on him i guess gus bradley it, which is the Colts' defensive coordinator uh just didn't see him in his system with that being said i think dan quinn can use a, uh, a shaq leonard um i shaq didn't play mike this year uh, he usually does so i think shaq can play off ball if need be uh he definitely showed he can do it this year and last year and i think He's one of those players that you can plug in anywhere, and he's gonna make a play. He's a better, he's a good coverage linebacker uh, when when needed. And I mean, his best uh, his best attribute is that he can get the ball out of a out of a, a ball handler. I mean, not pause ball handler's uh, hands or skill position's hands. So I mean, I think I wow. think they could use something like that. Um, <laughs> All right. I think I think they could use uh, a Shaq Leonard in that defense. I mean, they have no problems with creating turn up turnovers on the Cowboys' defense, but I mean, nothing wrong game more turnovers. But I mean, he's going to be a big suitor. He has to clear waivers. I don't know if the Cowboys will even get their hands on him, but we'll see. Yeah, I hope the guy can clear waivers because that's just going to be pretty crappy if a old guy like him that's been doing a good service to Indianapolis for so many years just gets told to go to Arizona. Or, you know, some, <laughs> some kind of crappy team, you know. It's just, it just feel you got to feel bad for him. Hopefully he can clear waivers and go to a new team on his own terms. And hopefully that's the Cowboys. Because, yeah, I agree with both of y'all. The turnovers that Courtney brought up are perfect reasons of why this guy would be perfect for this team. I mean, the Cowboys love turnovers. That's how, that's how we win games. I mean, if the defense doesn't force turnovers, we don't win games. So um, that's a big get for us. Uh, so you look like you want to say something, Joe. What you want to say? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I saw that. I, I don't know how you noticed that, <laughs> but I don't know how you noticed that. But, like, again, going back to Marquise Bell, like, he's been such a revelation this year, undrafted from FAMU. Yeah. Um, such a speedy linebacker. I feel like it hold him back because I don't want to ruin his development. He's already been amazing so far this year. We, didn't, we had no idea this guy was going to be good, and especially with the banged up LVE. 
but you know, seeing how good he's been this year, I don't know if I want to sign Leonard uh, if he can possibly split playing time and decrease playing time for Marquise Bell. But again, I mean, if we're trying and to go in, if we're, chip. yeah, he's, we're trying to win a chip. Yeah, we're trying to have brutal. a playoff push, and so you're gonna need guys like who, like Darius Leonard, who have that um, instinctive ability and that feel for the ball to you know take the ball away at least in the playoffs. I mean, he could be a big help for us. We don't really get turnovers that much in the playoffs most of the time. I guess you could say the Buccaneers game is a little bit of a of um an outlier, but I mean that was against a wash Tom Brady. I mean, mm-hmm. so we just to, we're not used to getting turnovers in the playoffs. He could be a big get if we do get him. So I'm kind of indifferent to this. I don't know if I have a decision. I don't know. I might change my answer to being indifferent. All right. I mean, I'm still going with yes, though. I think it's very important. I think it's just a yearly thing. You know, think about a, you know, it, look at the Colts, man. We we keep on giving like, you know, charity, charity items from them. You know, T.Y. Hilton from last year. Then we got Stephon mm-hmm. Gilmore this yeah, this offseason. Why not keep it going with Shaq Leonard? You know, just get him for a good rental this the year. Dallas try to Colts. Win this Cowboys. And try to win this. Hey, yeah. I mean, it's just like the, the Dallas Knicks. Um, but, um, <laughs> I mean, we, we're going to have some really big offenses in the playoffs this year. And I think we need to be as beefed up pause as we can on <laughs> defense. So, you know, we don't have overshone. We don't have Van Der Esch this year. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I, I think we need to, you know, just make sure that we have as much depth as possible to go up, to go up against some of these offenses like San Francisco and Philadelphia, which, you know, we're inevitably, inevitably going to see in the playoffs. Um, mm-hmm. But anyways, let's uh, switch to the Mavericks. We'll talk a little bit more about today's matchup against the Commanders later. Uh, but I do want to talk about the Mavericks. Now, the Lakers game will be um, completed by the time that this ep- episode is up. We do not know the results to it. But we do know the results of the last two games before the Lakers game this Wednesday night, which, is, was, which was against the Kings and the Bucks. Both pretty, pretty bad losses. Let's really focus on the Kings game real quick. What went wrong? What's going on? Uh, TJ, I hate to be this guy. I hate to be don't the, say the, the, the one word. Don't, don't say the one I hate, word. I hate to be the pessimist. Don't say it. <laughs> we might be a fraud watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I, I don't want to be that guy usually. Uh-huh. But man, <laughs> Dude, why are we getting hammered by the good teams? Like, I understand, like, you could lose by, like, a few points, but we're just getting beat crazy by the good teams. Yeah. And so, but... oh, boy, we're on fraud watch. I... Tonight, too. Nah, not against the Lakers. Not against the Lakers. Not in my opinion. I they don't got, know. They got to lose. Who's the last time we beat the Lakers? Eh? We could beat the We could beat we, the, we beat, the Lakers. I think we beat the Lakers. must beat them. We usually take care of the Lakers. They still, they don't have that four quarter. I, I think yeah, they were well. against right. the Lakers last time yes, I checked. We we, we, we even played them this year. Doesn't look like it. But you know, we going back to this, we should be the better team. Yeah, this Kings should game. Be. It's just should. it's the story of physicality. Like, they kind of own us as of late. If we're being honest, but you know, they just they're so physical down low. Sabonis just had his way. It was yeah. too easy. <laughs> I mean, efficient, too, from the field, 13 to 15, 13 boards. I mean, what were we expecting, I guess, against a team that usually doesn't have a good front court in the Mavericks? Derek Lively, his inexperience was kind of shown right here. Um, I expected them to take advantage of that full stop. Uh, Luka and Kyrie, I mean, they didn't have bad nights. They had a pretty good night overall, but not much help, again, from the starting lineup. Uh, Grant Williams has kind of gone a little bit down a little bit as of late. Hasn't been as efficient from three-point line as he has been. He's not taking as many shots as he has been. So, same with Derek uh, uh, Derek Jones Derek Jr. Jones. And so, I'm just wondering why we're not taking as many shots and at least being willing to put the ball up. We're not crashing the glass as much as we were in the past few uh, games. But this might just be the what the team is so far. We have time you know, to develop, but we're just not physical right now. And it shows me you play against dominant front courts. Uh, with all stars like De- uh, Demontis Sabonis, who just pounded the glass all day, we had no answer. We still cannot rebound. This is like, you know, it's well, kind of no like surprise. what we do right now. We yeah, know we're no never surprise. Be able to rebound. We know. It's, we know. We know, yeah. Yeah. We know the setting. You know, when we when we play a good big, you know, a, a team with a good big, and that they're dominant in the paint, that they're going to dominate every single time. We saw that Dwight Howard dominated us. 
any any big name center in recent history has had a dominating dominating stat line against the Mavericks. Just one day, I just asked for a Hall of Fame glass cleaner. I just asked for <laughs> someone who has the Hall of Fame <laughs> glass cleaner <laughs> badge. Go multiple times. <laughs> just somebody. I mean, once, Derek Lively. <laughs> I mean, Derek Lively, he was trying. He was trying. He's just young. And yeah, I don't expect really him trying. I don't expect him to play like, you know, he's uh well, who should I compare him to? Who should I say a great rebounder? Like Charles Barkley or something like that. Should I yeah, say Tyson who's a, Chandler? He's not trying Tyson to be Chandler. Chandler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, cool. yeah, I should have <laughs> done that. Barkley's way smaller than uh Derek Lively. He'll but yeah, like by Jones though. <laughs> yeah, be man. by Jones. Popeye Jones, what y'all know about Popeye Jones? But yeah, like this team is just not physical enough right now. They try to win games by finesse by Luca and Kyrie, but to win the playoffs, you're gonna have those guys do the dirty work down low, and so uh, not a good thing we've seen this past few weeks. We left last time talking about um, their series against the Pelicans, and so I was a little bit hopeful. But this, these last two games against the Bucks and Kings were a little bit concerning. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, when you look at their their record so far, I mean, you said you said I'm not even gonna repeat what you said, but I mean, they only have one victory <laughs> against a team over 500, and that's the Orlando Magic. Mm. The Orlando Magic, go, which, man. I mean, good resume. The team that should, <laughs> RTF <laughs> the resume. team that should even be yep, that's an RTF resume. Is look a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> but listen, uh, I'm, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. But I mean. This team sucks defensively. I mean, they're terrible. Awesome. Um, I I thought they would have been a lot better than they were. I mean, I think last time we talked, they're like 18th, which you know obviously is less than average. But now they're like 25th. Uh, I mean, they can't get no type of boards. They had about 14 offensive yeah. rebounds. 14 offensive rebounds last night. 22 second chance points. I mean, Sabonis is like okay, like you know, Sabonis is an all star. One of the top big men in the league. He he will do his thing on a nightly basis. But 14 offensive rebounds, like, bro, you can't win a game like that. So, I mean, I think there's just a whole bunch of defense where they just don't ever want to stop defensive possessions. They don't ever want to close them out. And, man, like uh, Joe said, they're just not physical. And I think, it, I mean, it's a lot. It's not, you know, obviously backcourts are more f- important in today's league than front courts, but I mean, if, these, if this team faces a front court that is, if any set, like resemblance good, I mean, they're cooked. They're cooked. It's over. They're getting cooked. I mean, they're cooked. They're getting hey, cooked. I, yeah, I, I really do like that you brought up the physicality of both of y'all. I mean, this is what, you know, you if y'all remember, Jason Kidd told the team that they were soft yes. after losing yeah. to Toronto, and ever since he said that, they have only gotten softer. Softer? <laughs> I mean, they have gotten way softer. But, I mean, you look at Sacramento, that was kind of a scheduled loss, second night of a back-to-back. You're coming back from Milwaukee? Milwaukee. From Milwaukee to Dallas in one day, and also making the game on Sunday an early game, too, by an hour. I mean, it does kind of suck. But, I mean, in the end, these people are getting paid like 100000 a day. They can, they can do that. You know? But, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I don't know, man. It's tough. The physicality is bad. The rebounding, the defense is bad. We've all heard this before. So, I mean, I'm looking at – I'm, I'm going to ask this question now is that, you know, what, what, kind of, what kind of upgrade do we need to help us boost our defense or just boost this team to get us over that hump to make sure that we actually make the playoffs, let alone the play-ins this year. Um, I, let me start real quick, though, for real quick, because I do want to say that, yeah, I do think that the struggling wings is a huge, huge problem. And I don't know if we can have a wing that really does good with Luka and Kyrie on the team at the same time. I don't know, but, I mean, it is really concerning. Derek Jones Jr. is almost our leading scorer for our wings. Grant Williams <laughs> is, but he's not even – you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing you – know, Grant Williams is like, what, it's 11 crazy. points per game? Like, that's not good enough. And Mark Keever, you have to – We signed two wings to yeah. do – and, and they're just – And Josh Green is just not cutting it at all this man, year. I mean, we could have a whole conversation about Josh Green. I don't know what's going on with him. We need to, you know, somebody needs to sit down and talk to him. But, you know, obviously we need to get this to wing to going. You know, this, we, we need some wings. You know, I know OG Ananobi has always been a name that's been flying around. 
I don't know if the Raptors are finally going to be able to let, let, let him go for once. You know, they're always like, we'll get, we'll take three first round picks for OG and Anobi. Like what the hell? <laughs> go. Your team sucks. Uh, and then, you know, you got Jeremy Grant too. I've always loved Jeremy Grant. That would be another good wing player that can shoot, get, get open and defend. Um, another player that people don't like to bring up that, you know, might be a familiar name, Dorian Finney-Smith. No, you know? no, no, no more, no Come more. On, man. Come on, he's, he's a good. Like, like, you like, you know, like, he's I good from morale, it. but it's not champ. It's not a championship move. If we're trying to go for a chip, man, we need, I think, a front court. You said wing. I think we need front court presence. And some for some people, that's Pascal Siakam. I personally don't see that. Um, Pascal Siakam, he's a good scorer from the front court. He doesn't. He doesn't crash the glass like that. And so for a guy who is 6'8", 6'9", he only averages 6.8 boards a game, he's not really crashing the, crashing the glass like that. Is there really any fours today that are, you know, averaging 10 boards a game anymore? Not that many. So, Luca. We, yeah, I guess you want to count that. But, like, we need someone who can dominate um, down low and at least try to get at least eight, nine boards a game. Because I don't think I don't think we're bad at wing. Um, I'm fine having three and D guys like Grant Williams. I think he's good enough. I just want guys that can prevent us getting 14 offensive rebounds, like Courtney said, because that is just flat out crazy. Now, granted, we actually had 11 offensive rebounds in this game against the Kings too, so we were kind of holding our own a little bit. But you can do a lot to prevent this. Yeah, you you can do some stuff to prevent this. We need a front court presence, so. I think, you know, Jeremy Grant, I mean, I look at his numbers, he's a great scorer, but again, he doesn't like, he doesn't rebound like that for some strange reason. He's a big guy. I don't know where these glass cleaners are anymore. I just, I'm trying to look around the DeAndre league. DeAndre Aiden's clearing that boards over there in Portland, dude. You can't get any <laughs> rebounds with DeAndre Aiden there in the paint, dude. Hey, Aiden, Aiden been a bore <laughs> beast this year. Is that somebody you're thinking about maybe, DeAndre Aiden, though? I mean, what are some names? Honestly, I mean, that was a guy I was thinking of in the offseason, but we never – we tried to get him, but he just didn't come over I here. I hate to get DeAndre Aiden. I would never you would hate want him on our team. He just didn't seem like he, you know, is bought in all the time. So. Yeah, no. Yeah. Lenny, uh, uh, just talking in about that. That was, cra- that was a crazy <laughs> backhand, what Courtney just said. Do you remember that? Uh, what Booker yeah. said a few days ago about Aiden or yesterday, Aiden. I think. Oh, what did he yeah, say? Yeah, yesterday. Uh, it's something along the lines of, uh, I've been, <laughs> if he plays like that every night or something like that, I've been wanting to play like that every night. Something like that. Bro. It was because he, he got <laughs> he's like not, a, they still me. lost. They still lost. They, um, it was a Suns Blazers matchup a day ago, and Booker's like, you know, he played very well, and, you know, it'd be great if he did that every night. And I'm like, wow. Cause he, well, I mean, the Suns beat the Blazers. No, the yeah, they actually oh, beat them yeah, still. Did, yeah, everybody acts but, up when they got. Uh, oh, Devin Booker. <laughs> Booker special. Dude, oh, man, I will never forget say? that. I will never forget that. Oh yeah, series. he said he said he played extra hard tonight. I seen that, and my challenge for him is to play like that every night. That's what he said. Boy, I mean, that's actually, like, I would say though that I agree with Booker there. Like, good good for Booker to say that honestly. Oh yeah, he's not lying. Booker not so lying. much, but that that is a valid little diss right there that I Ooh, like. Oh boy, I like that. What what if we tried to go after Kyle Kuzma? No, I don't. No, no we don't need Kuzma. We do not need Kuzma. But he can crash the oh, glass like at times. At times, yeah. At times, he's, like he's not a he's not consistent brother. rebounder. If we want a center, dude, I would love Mitchell Robinson. First of all, I know that's a little outdated of a source, but mm. I think I think Mitchell Robinson would be a great answer. Um, other people, man, I don't know. I just would not like. Uh, I would not like Aiden. Uh, Nurkic would have been just fantastic for this team. I think. Oh, I wouldn't. Have, I would not have minded that. Oh, I, would have liked I think that. Uh, someone who's been linked to the team for like a couple years now, uh, Clint Capella. Clint Capella, Clint Capella. I would, wouldn't, wouldn't mind that. Turner. Wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Miles Turner. I thought we were going to get him that one off season. Oh yeah, Miles Turner. Oh my gosh, we never get him. Clint Capella is somehow <laughs> still in the Hawks. I don't know how he's still there. Could have sworn he was in Detroit. All of them hostage. Yeah, there's so many teams holding players yeah. hostage at this point. Crazy, just for I'm ransom, about bro. OG and Anobi. 
Just hold anyway, OG is, OG and Pascal and Clint Capella have been trade like rumors for like going on two and a half, three years now. Yeah, At some point these dudes have to go somewhere else, right? I don't know, right? Man, their teams suck. Oh, so anyway, let's get to the Rangers real quick. We'll talk about the Rangers for like what we'll do one thing because we're at thirty five minutes. Uh, we'll talk about the Rangers for one thing, and I want to say, should Corey Seager had a say in the MVP? Because obviously, Otani won the MVP. We could say all we want about Otani's future, but I want to talk about the MVP and how he took it from Corey Seager. Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, how how do y'all do y'all think that Seager should have deserved MVP or should have had at least a say in it? Do y'all think Otani deserved it? Am I being you know- a little biased here? Initially, when I saw you write this question, I thought you meant it as in should Seager have a say, as in like going for Otani in free agency. I didn't know you meant it like that. But when I look mm. at this, these first place votes, man, how does this dude Corey Seager not even get one? Not even one first place Crazy. vote? So Are you kidding me? Because you named this right. Yes. Everybody voted for him for first place. So here's the thing like, they both missed games. Seager missed a little bit of games in the front part of the season. Otani obviously missed later parts of the season. So if they both missed games and one uh, eventually had more of a valuable impact later on, and granted he had a better team, I know. Why can he not just get at least one vote? Corey Seager was hitting. He was competing for the batting title. He was, again, leading in shortstop power numbers again, once again, the season. He eventually won the World Series MVP. I know postseason uh, stats don't really count, but, man, he was vying for a batting title. Later on for the AL, one of the best hitters in the game, his overall best season as a batting average. Why is this guy not vying for a first place vote at least just one? Exactly. So I know Shohei Otani is amazing and stuff, but one not even getting one vote is crazy to me. So I think he should have had a say for sure. Should he have won? I could say Otani could win, but not one vote is kind of like ridiculous in my opinion. It just shows kind of like how crazy these voters are. I think um, even looking at the Hall of Fame ballot, uh, Hall of Fame balance as of late it shows that these guys really just don't care. So it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, you know the script is in for Shohei. They got you know Shohei's a new phase, bro. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say that. As long as if we get him, though, you know I ain't tripping. But I mean, uh, I'm looking like yeah, Shohei got thirty plate first place votes. He named this four hundred twenty points. Seager was second with two hundred sixty four points. But I have to ask. This is just a question. Did Trevor Simeon being um, I mean, not Trevor Simeon. Trevor sure. Simeon? I was like, Whoa. Marcus, yeah, what, what a name. Marcus Simeon being yeah, third cool. place. Is that? <laughs> mm-hmm. I was thinking about uh, Broncos legend Trevor Simeon. Shout out to Trevor Simeon. Yeah, the legend. Yeah, he played yeah, he start, uh, started a game for the Saints and we beat the uh, the Bucks that day. I remember that. I remember. Crazy, I man. remember that game. But Marcus Simeon being <clears> third place, does he? Does that, that hurt Corey Seager's chances? Of where they have MVP, considering they had two. Probably. What hurt? What hurt his chances of the Rangers being good? That's well, what. That's what hurt his chances. There's more. There's more help to his team. It was not it's an just, obvious outlier as Otani was. You know, it's we just had, the fact. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, but I, I think that I think it's actually a, the the worst argument over that because I don't I don't think that's the right argument. I think if you actually look at it, Otani, if you take Otani off the Angels, they're still fourth in the AL West. You know, the A's are still the worst team. You take the Rangers, you take Corey Seager off the Rangers, and you don't have the Rangers. You put, you take the Rangers under the Seattle. The Rangers don't make the playoffs, and they don't make the playoffs by a good amount, honestly. I mean, it's a historically good offense. We had times where we were still doing good with Corey Seager injured, but we wouldn't have lasted throughout the entire season doing that. Ezekiel Duran was good for a good portion of the season, but then he sucked. And, and that's no disrespect to him. I love Duran. Shout out Duran. But he he didn't he wasn't going to be able to sustain that the whole year. So I think Corey Seager should have easily gotten at least a first place vote. He should have at least been in conversation. He was by far the best player on the Rangers this year. Otani was the better slugger, but you know he was a DH. His pitching was decent. Um, and, but I guess in the end, I shouldn't be arguing over the fact that this guy was a pitcher and a hitter and was still competent <laughs> in both of those categories and really good at one of them. So, I mean, you do have an argument for both. I think in the end, Otani is the rightful MVP. Um, I think he is the best player in baseball, and I think that's what MVP should be. Um, but I do, I do think that the disrespect to Seager was just pretty crappy. 
um, on the, on just, the media part. Just to wrap it up real quick, baseball is the only sport where you can give the MVP to a team that's trash. Because any other sport, that's like laughable. You can't do that. Yeah, you, you can't, can't do that. that. Yeah, For some strange reason, they don't like. They don't make up their mind. They'll give it to the, the MVP to a good team one time, but then they'll give the MVP to Mike Trout three times. Which I mean, I understand, but yeah. the MVP season that Trout has had, if you're, if you're talking about valuability, I mean, they're still bad. Otani is one MVP again. Granted, pitching and hitting, I love it, but the fact he got it unanimous on a team that was terrible, it's just crazy to me. And you saw once again how valuable Corey Seager was in World Series Game 1. I mean, we were down two runs to start that inning. Look who saved the day again. Corey Seager. Honestly, a superhero for this team. So, it is what it's it is. Crazy. But... And not to mention, it seems like it's it kind of does seem a little hypocritical because you got the, the AL Manager of the Year. It seemed like they really based the AL Manager of the Year off wins. Yeah, but they, so didn't, I don't know. they didn't do that for, for MVP. Because you look at it, I mean, they gave the Orioles manager the, you know, the AL manager of the year, which is all right. I mean, Bochy, I'm not mad, I'm not mad an about argument. It. Bochy got really screwed, I guess. But but I do want to point out that the only time, the only person that didn't vote for Bochy in any of the placements was a Houston voter, was a oh, Houston writer. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> what a loser. I'm surprised. Uh, you know, the but only he, person he, that he put Dusty in there. <laughs> of course, the only person who caused uh, Derek Jeter not to get a unanimous Hall of Fame uh, induction was a Red Sox voter. You know that? Yep. See, I mean, it's just you know these losers. It, it's man, sad. They they, 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 they it let over. their biases get in the way, and these people yeah, I control. I would say you're, you're so sad. the second best hitter in baseball right now. I mean, I just like <laughs> I don't understand why you got to give your biases to your opinions to give respect to other people. So I don't it's know. Real quick, I'm just going to say we are at 42 minutes. I want to say shout out to the Dallas Stars. I was very disappointed in them against the Colorado <laughs> Avalanche. Up 3-0 against the freaking Avalanche and lose it. I was like, this is the same team as last year, same team as the years before. They're going to always – and shout out uh, Yuri Lettman right here, uh, Stanley Cup champion for the Dallas Stars. Um, you know, they, they always they always seem to do good, but they'll lose to the good teams in the end, and that's the avalanche in this instance. But, I mean, you look at what they did against the Rangers, they did the almost the exact opposite to what they did. Uh, what they lost against the avalanche is what they won against the Rangers. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they came back. They had six unanswered goals against New York. This is actually funny. I went to a Dallas Stars New York Rangers game. Uh, two years ago, I believe, and we went up 2-0 in like the first five minutes, and then the Rangers scored four goals in the next 10 minutes. That's and that crazy. was really bad, That's really crazy. bad. But we scored six unanswered against the New York Rangers. We had Scott Wedgwood in, our backup goalie, which, you know, is, is uh, he looked really good. A lot of people don't really like him, um, and I Scott thought he looked Wedgwood. really good. I mean, Mace, uh, you know, and I want to give a quick shout out to our second and third lines, you know, especially the line with Finn, Marchment, and Madonov. They've been so good. Marchment has been great. They took away a goal from him last uh, against the Rangers, which was goalie interference. Shouldn't have been goalie interference. It was such a bullshit call. It, uh, but then Ooh. he scored a goal like in the next 15 seconds. So I'm telling you, man. Uh, yeah. Shout out Mason Marchment for that. I really do like how the Stars are playing. They have Vegas tonight. The results will be in by the time this episode is up. But I always love the Vegas matchups because they're always close. We have a good rivalry with them right now. New rivalry brewing. And I like it, man. It's it's a fun it's a fun rivalry. Always close games. So it's so unfair uh, how good it's so unfair how good they are, first of all. Being yeah, that they just we, we match up with them sometimes. Just became you know? a franchise. But I gotta ask you before you move on. Are you loving the new uh, Stars news about the AAC? Mike Madonna, you heard about the news? Oh, yeah, lovely, man. It's about damn time he gets a statue, dude. Madonna and Dirk, both with a statue, like, next to each other, entering the stadium is going to be so legendary, man. It's right. It, you know, he deserves it. Obviously, I didn't watch him, but, I mean, if you go around my house, you'll probably see at least 10 Madonna jerseys. So, I mean, <laughs> if you want to, you might even be able to put him on the Dallas Mount Rushmore. I don't know if you could can. Be, could we be. should we could talk about that in, in the next episode of who's our Dallas Mount Rushmore because you could put a lot of people up there and you know I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't even consider Madonna but I think you could I think you could consider him so. Hmm. For sure. 
Let's no, go ahead. Do that next episode for sure. Yeah, we'll we'll do that <laughs> next episode. I'm down for that. Um, so we got the Thanksgiving betting lines right here, y'all. Thanksgiving betting lines for the <laughs> Washington Commanders and the Dallas Cowboys. Let's start off with the line. We got the Dallas Cowboys favored at negative ten and a half points. But they're favored to win by ten and a half points. Do you think they go over or under on this instance? Man, this is Thanksgiving. It is a Cowboys home game. I'm oh, yeah. smashing. I'm smashing the Tell over. We are going to oh, yeah. beat the. <laughs> we're gonna beat the crap out of these dudes. <laughs> And let me tell you why. You go back to that Washington game they had last week. They were just looking miserable. Couldn't get anything going. Sam Howell was a little bit turnover prone. Also, he's usually not as turnover prone, but uh, he was struggling a little bit last week. Um, so I think this Dallas Cowboys team, they play good at home. Uh, we've seen how they've um, uh, been on the streak, going, going for 13 straight home wins. I mean, Tommy DeVito was slicing this commander's defense up last week. So... I'll leave it there. I think we can just destroy this team. I think it should be an easy Dude. over. Literally. Wait, I think I hear what y'all talking about now. Anyway, anyways. Uh, yeah, Tommy DeVito, um, yeah, was cooking the mess out of that guy, uh, out of the, the commanders. So, I mean, I think I think uh, the Cowboys got something to prove for sure. Um, I, I think I'm going to go over. I think, I think I'm going to go over. Um, I mean, simple as that. Over. Yep, give me the uh, uh over right now. Over by a lot, all right? I'm going over. Thanksgiving home game, just like you said. Commanders, we always seem to do pretty good against them at home. Licking my chops, man. This is great. It'll be, we'll be, is great it'll be a good Thanksgiving, I Thanksgiving present. wait. It is going to be a lot to eat. So the over under, we got 48 and a half points. I'm going to start real quick. I'm going over. I'm still beefing it up, man. Pause. I'm saying Cowboys by Man. at least 30. I'm going to be real pissed off when Brian Robinson gets 200 rushing yards on us and we lose by a field goal in the fourth. But I'm going these over. Dudes, Sam Howell, honestly, he's played very good against us so far oh, to yeah. start his career. But um, over under, I'm going to go over again on this one. I think it'll be uh, close because they'll probably get like a garbage time score in the end, but I think it'll be over. Yeah, I'm also going to go over. I think both teams want to show out. Um, obviously, it's probably going to end up being the most watched game this season, as most Thanksgiving Cowboys games are. So I'm going to go over. All right. So we got all over for that one. I'm going to go with Dak. Uh, Dak Prescott's the next one, 284 and a half throwing yards. Obviously, we've been talking about Dak a lot this episode. I'm actually going to go under for this one, though. Um, we did say that, uh, you know, the New York Giants quarterback, I mean, he was kind of cooking him up last week. Um, <laughs> I do think that this, again, is going to be another game, kind of like similar to last week with Carolina. You know, Dak does good, but he doesn't really reach the, you know, a lot of yards because, I mean, in the end, we're just going to be, we're just going to be there. I think we create a lot of turnovers. Sam Howell was doing a lot of turnovers last week. So, I'm going to say that, you know, Cooper rushes in halfway through the fourth quarter and Dak Prescott gets to like 200 yards. I can agree with that. I'm going to stick with that a little bit under because, you know, we see again another blowout, but Dak doesn't have 200 yards. Again, Panthers, he had, I think, about 180 yards passing. So I'm going to go under there. I think it'll be a blowout. I think the defense will have a field day. I expect a lot of sacks. So um, I'm going to say under. All right. And then we're going to go into Sam Howell. Oh, sorry, sorry. My yeah, yeah, let me let me just go, you know. I was going to uh, go. Nah, I feel that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go quick. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over. Just quick over. Going over. All box. right. Well, then let's go to Howell. Sam Howell. He's at two eighty three and a half throwing yards. Just one yard short of Dak Prescott's uh, over under. Um, I don't know. I'll let y'all start off with that. How do you How do y'all feel about Sam Howell? He's efficient. So you know what. I say he'll get this just over in the, you know what? You know, I will. I'll say it. He'll get over. We usually have a really good pass defense. We don't have um, many yards. We surrender through the air. Mm -hmm. But I think he could eventually, like, carve us up, say, like, in the fourth quarter in garbage time. So I think he gets this by just, like, maybe a few yards over. I mean, he's illegally in passing yards right now for a reason. I think he's going to throw the ball. Go throw a lot, so I'm gonna go over. Yeah, he is throwing a lot. Um, 
I, I do, you know, I, I really do like his stat lines. Um, I got him as a backup in fantasy, so I really do prefer if he <laughs> does get the over here. And I do think he does get the over here. He does seem to do really well. Um, and also, he he did really well against the Cowboys last year with his with his start in you know the last week. So I mean, I, I could see it happening. And the and the you know the Commanders still lose by twenty. So um, let's move on. The Pollard Tony Pollard sixty four and a half rushing yards. These rushing yards overs have gone just a little bit lower and lower as each Ooh, week hard goes to on. Man, it's at sixty four and a half. What do y'all think? A hey, Tony Pollard was escaping the running by committee allegations uh, last week, but <laughs> saying we should get more Dowell involvement. But he said, "You know what? When you bring up that talk, you know, I'll I'll do my job. I'll get more yards per carry, and I'll get a touchdown on top of it." So Pollard, I think he'll have a good day. I think he'll have at least eighty rush yards. I think he'll go over. I'm about to go under. I'm sorry. I don't. I- I don't know. I mean, he only had like what sixty-one <laughs> rushing yards uh, last week. The Twelve I mean, carries, sixty-one yards. Yeah. I mean, te- technically, I still live in under. So, I'm I'm gonna go keep going with the trend. I'm gonna go under. Yeah, I mean, I gotta agree with you. I mean, honestly, I don't remember the last time that he's probably covered his over under on rushing or uh, yeah, rushing yards. It's probably been a really long time. I don't have a reason to go over here. I'll just go under just because, you know, I don't think he's he hasn't covered in a long time. I, to be honest, I don't think he's covered since Arizona. Um, so I'm wow. just, yeah, I'm going to go under. Um, so let's move on. Um, we got uh, Brian Robinson Jr. Um, his rushing yards is only at 45 and a half. Um, so I guess it kind of makes sense with the Cowboys defense always doing pretty good against the run. Sometimes, you know, like, for example, I remember New York Jets in week two, Brees Hall only had seven yards. Um, he was on a snap count at that time, but still pretty crazy to think about. Um, I'll start off here, though. I'm going to actually go over. I think it's funny because I'm saying the Cowboys are going to win by 30. I'm going over for all the commanders players, but <laughs> I, mean, I do think it's over. Brian Robinson is a is a um, quality running back. 45 yards just isn't that much. Um, I do think that they can be able – that they they might be able to run it just a little bit well. Lane Van Der Esch again, out. So we'll have to see. I didn't really look at how the running game was against Carolina last year. I was a little busy during the game. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I'll go over. I'll go over, too. I think he has a good day. I don't think he's – he's not – he's a young running back with a little bit more energy. Uh, I think um, even though we have a good run defense, I think he can have himself a good day, particularly in the mm-hmm. second half. Yeah, I mean, when I think about running and commanders, I, I mean, and Thanksgiving, I mean, I think we all go back to that 2020 game when Antonio Gibson just had the game of his life against the Cowboys. Oh, he was, he was balling, bro. They still yeah, talk about I that mean, game in the Washington. They still talk about that game. <laughs> that game was something to behold, man. I mean, <laughs> obviously, that Cowboys team wasn't worth a goddamn thing, but I mean, he was going crazy. I hope B B Rob doesn't replicate it, but for this circumstance, I'm gonna go over. I don't think he has such a crazy game. I think he probably has pretty high stats. All right. Well, um, I'm gonna move on to the CD Lamb receiving yards. We have 95 and a half receiving yards for CD Lamb today. Or yeah, today. So what do y'all what do y'all say? Over or under. Over, I think he has a phenomenal day. I mean, these DBs were getting cooked against the Giants receivers. Oh yeah, it's, it's a CD type of day. This is a Thanksgiving noon game. Oh my lord, he's better have himself a day. Hundred, hundred twenty yards minimum. Over. Oof. Hey, CD tricked me last week. Um, <laughs> thought he was gonna do way better than he did, but you know they won the game, so it's fine. That defense think, is I good he, though. I, that defense yeah. is good. Yeah, their defense is decent. I think he shows up again this game. I think he wants to have a big game on Thanksgiving, uh, especially against on the big stage. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over. Uh, I'll go. I'll, I'll disagree for this one. I'll go under just for just cause just just for why why not? Um, I think C D Lamb. Yeah, I mean, again, just just you know, getting getting up quickly. I know. I think we're gonna force turnovers. Um, I don't know how often we're going to get the offense involved. Um, I think, uh, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a Michael Gallup day. Maybe it's a Brandon Cooks. I don't really know how CD Lamb does good or does against the, the commanders, but I don't really remember any really dominant performances against the commanders in recent history for CD Lamb. 
So I don't know. I'll go under. I'll disagree for this time. Um, but let's go ahead and answer the trivia question. Um, that is the uh, the question. Okay, the question was, what were the best winning record seasons for the Cowboys since winning their last Super Bowl in 1995? They've had two seasons where they went 13 and three. Um, what? I mean, you know, y'all just give me your answers. I believe one of them obviously is 2016, the Dak rookie Zeke, um, Dak um, Zeke rookie year. 2016, season when they went crazy. It had to be that season. I think that was like, oh, not oh six or seven. I think it's oh because they had like what 13 pro bowlers they went like it was crazy it was that crazy. year it was obviously crazy. Tony Romo chokes in the division yeah. round you want to talk about that mm-hmm. I think it was 07 okay that, that's so 16 and 07 y'all agree with each I be- other I, be- I believe it was 1607 alright well congratulations y'all got the yes. trivia question right uh, let's, let's go yes. uh, shout out, out shout people out. forget shout about that season People forget about that season people, one people. because, because um, obviously because of the choke, but also because that's the undefeated Patriots season. So they that's were true, second true. actually, yeah. in, they were second in record in the league. But then obviously we know what happened: uh, the Giants upset at the Texas Stadium, <laughs> old Texas Stadium, in Irving. Yep. The well, it, it, was was that the season? Um, after that, isn't that the Terrell Owens? That's my quarterback. That I think that, that was. I think no, no. That was the Seahawks. That was the Seahawks loss. Oh, that's the Seahawks. That was the year. The year before. Year before. Year before. That's my quarterback. Yeah, the Seahawks. <laughs> Crazy man. man. <laughs> Shout out, y'all. Y'all are some real Cowboys fans. Cowboys fans were also rated the second most annoying fan base in the NFL by NFL players this week. So shout out to that. Um, yeah. Only by the Philadelphia right. Eagles. So at least we're not the worst. But anyways. Let's go ahead. Let's move on to socials. We're about an hour in, so go ahead. Dump your socials real quick before we leave. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Joseph underscore Duffy 99. Again, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Joseph underscore Duffy 99. Yeah, uh, Instagram is going to be C lives the life, and Twitter is going to be C underscore Machadi. Uh, and then uh, I got my my Twitter account is TJ underscore Krillowitz. Instagram account TJ dot Krillowitz. Um, and uh, of course, for our show, the 214 Sports Show, um, you can follow us on YouTube and Spotify. That's where we post our videos. Um, we'll also have a presence on X or Twitter and Instagram. Also, TikTok. You can follow us all there. At 214 Sports Show, not the 214, at 214.